many choices, you know? Uh, just now, I mean, I went there and uh, David had an X, uh, XT, right? I had double cheeseburger, all right, what is it called? Uh, Whopper Jr., right? But I had two. I'm cheap, so two, one dollar each, that's two bucks. That's good. That was good, that was good. That's enough, <laughs> okay? No. Last night I went to Taco Bell's. We don't cook, my boys cook. They cook all American stuff because mom's working full time. And uh, so basically she doesn't cook. And uh, so now we kind of like eat, eat out quite often. Last night me and Nathan went for a cup of chili. One dollar each. That was filling. Anyway, you, you weren't there, Nate, David. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That was yesterday. Okay, but here, um, you choose Christ. That's central to what we do. Then uh, it's the church that where Christ placed you in because you have the Holy Spirit of God lives in you and that now you mature in the church and you serve in the church. Through the church, you accomplish God's cause, which is His purposes on earth. And that's what we're talking about, learning how to choose life in serving Him in doing Christ's mission on earth. And some life is learning how to do it effectively. And in the process, have a good time celebrating, worshiping God. And it starts with you learning to choose to do that. So it's important that the instrument that God used is the local church. So, even if you do anything, don't ever forget that, okay? Like for example, we do medical missions and so on and so forth. We do good works to support the local church to do God's mission. It's the same thing. We go there, we do the stuff that they can't do. Um, so here's the seminar goals. Discover the purpose for youth ministry, okay? Uh, this is a review to define the biblical product of youth ministry. So look, if you uh, have a tendency of falling asleep, my trick is take notes. If you can't, let's say you're over here and you're falling asleep, you do like this. Okay? Or you do like this. Okay? I'm not offended because I know you're struggling and I'm being bored. And then I'll make you full. Wake up, okay? But, so, that's the cue. If you're kind of dozing off, you can do that, okay? Or you just, you know, the, the Jews mastered this. I mean, if you know any Jews, anybody know any Jews? <laughs> they they have this education down pat. These guys are good. I mean, you know how they read the scripture and memorize it? They, they, they sway back and forth. That movement creates the rhythm, keeps their brain going. No? Keeps you awake. Okay, anyway. Um, examine the disciple-making process. So here's the purpose, the product, the process, okay? And then understand the principles, okay? What it's all about. Why are we doing this? And then, of course, we're going to go into phase one, which is the foundation of it. Phase two, ministry training. Uh, phase three, outreach. Okay? Phase four, leadership multiplication. 2 Timothy 2.2 2 talks about multiplication. It's about, not about us, not about our well-being, but obviously if you think about it, if Christ did not want us to have a purpose of equipping others to do the work of the ministry, then he would have given us a task and they would take it us home. Or he would have just said, okay, Nathan, Nathan, you're saved, right? You're yeah. okay, right? Okay, let's go home. I'll call you home tomorrow. Is that what you want? No. He has a purpose. There's X number of time. Uh, last week I preached at Lejua. Uh, time, tax, and time's up. Okay? Time's up is the day that you're going to die. Okay? God's going to call you home. So we all have this X amount of time. Believe me, if you're sitting here and you say, gee, I have a lot of time. I'm not going to worry about it. Trust me. If anybody can tell me when you're going to die, raise your hand. Nobody, right? God knows. And so there's a time when it's up. But this is what Christ wants us to do, is to learn the purpose, the product, the process, the principles, and how we're, we spent last time talking about the foundations. In the middle of this session, I'm going to walk you through a training, what I call consensus building process, and where you're going to interact and decide on a very simple uh, decision. 
how to fundraise and decide on the product. Okay, and you're gonna talk about it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you how to do it because oftentimes, if we don't learn how to discuss and how to come to a decision for the little thing like that, we're gonna fail in doing the bigger things. Okay, and that's why it's very important we learn the skills too, not just the theory. Okay, so. Uh, in Christ, a supernatural power, making disciples as to win, as the winning uh, or calling forth the elect, okay? Uh, you can call it believers, but I believe my theological framework is that God has already preordained and called the people that he's already preordained to, to save. Those are the elect. We don't do any saving. When we do any kind of ministry or evangelism, we don't save them. We basically... Win them by calling forth the elect. We give the presentation. Building up the elect in faith or we equip mature elect to minister. Okay? Uh, when we talk about uh, the local church, it exists to help the believers or the elect. Christ follows to grow and to carry, live out their calling. So that's the purpose of the church. That's the purpose of your youth ministry is to... Develop and make more disciples. Okay? Here's the process. This is just all review because for a number of you, you weren't here last week. And so I'm just going to go through again. Again, it's repetition and it's just basically reviewing. Uh, making disciples of all the nations of Matthew 28 where we basically start with going, baptizing, teaching to obey, and then make disciples. So the end product is not just doing evangelism, okay? Or even going. But the end product is the disciple who then in turn disciples someone else. And that's the re repeating process. So what Jesus did with the three, with the twelve, and so on and so forth. That's what it's all about. So the end product of Christ's ministry was to produce individuals who reflect both his character and priorities as modeled by his life. Okay? So that's the end product. So oftentimes we lose focus and we just so fixated. Remember that, that, that video clip I show you about the kids got chained to the, you know, because the parents was afraid that he's going to be lost or kidnapped. So they chained his child. They were focused on that. And oftentimes we don't know what is the end product, what is what Christ wants in, in ministry in our product. We tend to so get confused with just the programs. The programs are the means. Okay? I'm going to move real fast. I'm going to get you into a, an action mode. But look, the Lordship of Jesus Christ is the, the end result of this disciple who would surrender his life to Christ. And there's three, four, four phases here. But Jesus did. I mean, if you study it, I'm not going to spend the time doing the theory here for you. But I think if you study it, you will see that Jesus did the same of that limited amount of time on earth. He went through the building on the environment for growth. Then he equipped his disciples. And then he did the evangelism. And then he did the multiplication. That's the process. And so it starts with the foundation, ministry training, group outreach, and then leadership multiplication. So the process, and here's we're going to get right into the process. The intentional Moving of people through the various phases of development into Christ's life like this. Meaning, you don't do things without a purpose. Okay? Like, for example, I did not share with you the little story about the missions of Cambodian medical missions. No, there's a, there's a reason behind it because it gets back to what I'm doing at the end of this session. So it's the same thing. The process, essentially... You are intentionally moving the people through all these phases. But not everybody is in the same phase. Okay? So for example, you look at it. You have all these individuals who before they became a Christian. Okay? All the people's group. And then some people would call them, the church would call them lost. I like to call them their pre-Christians. They're, they're, they're those that God has already elected them. But they haven't heard the presentation of the gospel. They haven't accepted and surrendered their life to Jesus. So they're pre-Christians. Okay? Well, you could say they're lost because they haven't heard the gospel. But it's a matter of using terms. 
But they're the ones that needs to be one. 